I never force a clash, I never look on a DJ and tell them I want to kill them yet. Somehow when a DJ career kind of gets stiff, the only thing I feel like him can call Ninja my name and survive. Them start them war. Desman Ballantyne, better known as Ninja Man or Don Gargan, is an iconic Jamaican dancehall DJ and actor, known for his controversial and pro-gun lyrics and his stuttering and melodramatic musical delivery. In ancient Japanese culture, a ninja is a highly trained assassin who specializes in using undetected tactics in the art of slaughter. In modern dancehall culture, Ninja Man is the original lyrical terror, known for using his razor sharp wit, slow, steady, calculated delivery, and mastery of the art of rhyme and rhythm to musically slaughter any and all who crosses his path. For over 20 years, Desmond Ninjaman Ballantyne has stood out as one of the most candid, colorful and controversial of all Jamaica's dancehall DJs. With the skill, performance and lifestyle to earn the app title, the Dan Gorgon, he is a most respected DJ in the dancehall fraternity. It would be Ninja's over-the-top stage performances that cemented his place as the original gold teeth, front teeth, gun point teeth, Dan Gargan. The theatrics, politics, charisma, intensity and bravado that he brings to the live arena married with his ingenious on-the-spot lyrics has made him not only one of the most respected but one of the most feared lyrical stage opponents among other artists. Revered dancer lyricists such as Shabarangs, Merciless, Supercat, Bounty Killer, Beanie Man and Vice Cartel are among the lengthy list of Ninja Man's lyrical rivals. The story of Desmond John Ballantyne, OC Ninja Man, next on Jamaican Biography. People fascinates me, always have. Behind every big name Jamaican, I wondered what is their story, motivation, dreams and aspirations. I want some amazing facts, childhood memories, achievements and disappointments. I wonder where they get their drive. Jamaican biography gives me all of that and more. Welcome to the journey. Jamaica, Jamaica. Jamaica, Jamaica. Look how me need, look how me sweet. Make me hear you say gun panty book. Look how me need, look how me sweet. Make me hear Born Desmond John Ballantyne on January 20th, 1966 in Bay St. Mary, his family moved to Kingston when he was 11 and he started DJing a year later under the name Double Ugly. Initially performing for the Black Culture Sound System, he moved over to the Kilimanjaro organization in the early 80s and there got the chance to learn from Supercat and Early B. He changed his name to Ugly Man. Then Ninja Man, when another artist of the same name came forward. Kilimanjaro started its own label and in 1987, Ninja Man got the chance to make and self-produce his first single, a duet with Courtney Melody called Protection. It was a success and led to further hit collaborations on the producer Lloyd Dennis in 1988, most notably Cover Me with Tinga Stewart and Zig It Up with Flogan. However, Ninja Man's greatest acclaim would come at the turn of the decade when he became the initiator of the Badman era of 90s dancehall with the release of the highly acclaimed Gunman Anthems, Murder Them, My Weapon, Champion and Permit to Bury. Over the next few years, Ninja Man recorded prolifically for a variety of producers including King Jammy, Philip Fattis Borrell, Redman, Aini Kamose, Bobby Digital, Gussie Clark and Steely and Cleavy among others. His collection of hits over the years between 1989 and 1992 established his image as one of the most dangerous rude boys around. The controversial murder them, the chilling permit to bury, border clash, laugh and grin, mad danger, test the high power, my weapon, above the law, reality you want. He also continued to cut duets with artists like Kokoti, Gregory Isaacs and Linval Thompson. He also teamed up with Shabaranks and Admiral Tibet for Time So Serious. As Ninja Man popularity began to approach that of ranks, at least in Jamaica where all the gun talk wasn't yet a liability, the two struck up a spirited rivalry, trading bars at many concert clash. 
at the height of his notoriety, Ninja Man christened himself with the alternate appellation, original front teeth, gold teeth, gun point teeth, Dan Gargan, and inspired a legion of imitators with their own ninja team names. By 1993, however, Ninja Man's gun touting rude boy persona was beginning to spur a backlash. Criticized as irresponsible, he began to find it more and more difficult to get recording and performing gigs. He worked with producers. Henry John Jalas and Junior Reed during this period, but his career momentum was fading fast, and by the mid 1990s, his recording activity had tailed off substantially. While his recording career waned considerably in the face of a myriad of personal and legal issues, he continued to be one of Jamaica's most sought after performers. In 1999, he was cast as the sinister turncoat deportee in the feature film Third World Cup alongside celebrated actor Paul Campbell. Just a word with you, please. So what you want? You see, I'm here to see Caesar, is what I'm saying. I'm from England. I've done some business with him in England, and I'm here to finish up with him now, is what I'm saying. Even though they are right now. Well, he said I could wait inside until he's back because he'll be back later on. Ninja Re emerged on the overseas market, making his first publicity trip to the US in over a decade, appearing on Hot 97 in early 2000, New York's number one urban music station, among many others. Summer 2007 would have marked his official return to Carifest, his first New York appearance in over 15 years at the time. One of his most infamous rivalries, beside the ongoing quarrels with Florigan and Supercat, was the one with Shabaranks, leading to a number of clashes. The most memorable and historic clash against his arch rival was in 1990. Both entertainers were at the height of their careers as two of Dancehall's most domineering forces. They had faced off before, but at the annual Sting concert, the two engaged in a brutal, no hose barred lyrical showdown sparked by Ninja's vocal disdain over Shabba's signing to American record label Epic Records. While the battle was intensely personal and emotionally charged, the crowd loved every second of it, crowning Ninja Man the Sting Champion and dubbing it the Sting Super Clash. But Shabba, tonight Shabba is in a very dangerous battle. Shabba, say you can talk the last lyrics, so how you gonna lose your life? Oh Shabba, this is the last of you in the cemetery. You see the water. I got the permit to bury on the lies of the kill. Shabba, run to the right of me. I got the permit to bury on the lies of the kill. Move, the man be idiot, but you think I'm not gonna no come back. Down the years, he had had many lyrical showdowns with varying results. Some of these include Super Cat at Stig 1991. Mad Cabra at Sting 1995. Anyway, Sting, I said, you pick up a brand new his defeat to Merciless at Sting 2000. Him defeating Merciless at Sting 2001. And his infamous showdown with Vice Cartel at Sting 2003, which quickly turned ugly as a physical confrontation escalated on stage between him, Cartel, and members of Cartel Entourage. It left Ninja Man bruised and blooded. One, two. He has had many more lyrical showdowns on both big and small stages with various DJs down the years, immortalizing himself as a true giant of the Clash world. Hola. That's why I'm living on free food ticket. Not a money in the pocket, not a cent. We don't have to have to come back to you. You make a people brand new. Brand new. 
battling problems with crack cocaine in 1997, Ninja Man became a born again Christian and began performing gospel reggae tunes under the name Brother Desmond. The switch wasn't entirely permanent, however, leading to condemnations from some in Jamaica's Christian community. That was only the beginning of a series of incidents that kept Ninja Man's name in the headlines in spite of the decline of his recording career. True to the character he played in the 1999 film Third World Cup, he had several run-ins with the law during the late 90s. Among other allegations, he was accused of raping a woman at Knife Point in his home and more seriously of murdering a taxi driver in late 1999. He was acquitted on those charges but convicted of unlawfully possessing a firearm and ammunition and sentenced to a year in jail, also in late 1999. While serving his sentence, Ninja Man was reportedly assaulted by prison guards after attempting to shield his cellmates from a beating. He infamously brought an illegal firearm to Sting 2002 and handed it over to Renita Adams on stage. Things didn't calm down upon his release either. In July 2001, he was rushed to hospital after suffering several machete wounds, some to his head from a family associate trying to break up a physical dispute between him and his common-law wife. He was later charged with domestic assault. Several months later, he was arrested for driving erratically. In the summer of 2002, he was arrested again following a profanity lease triad at Reggae Curry Fest, which resulted in him being dropped from the subsequent festival engagements. In March 2009, Ninja Man along with his son Janil was arrested and charged in connection with the murder of Ricardo Ricky Trooper Johnson on Mall Road in Olympic Gardens, Kingston, Jamaica. He was granted bail in the sum of Jamaican $2 million in March 2012 and was scheduled to appear in court on July 15th of the same year. She come like a me, sit down in the dock away for you with him, I say. And the nature of the case where we may sit front of me a long time ago, go to start telling them no, where them did it now. Yes. just I realized where him there. Me been there, done that. I mean, if I didn't want to end up in that. That's why I yes. see this way happen. After his release on bail in 2012, he joined the mega-rich Joseph Bogdanovich's Downsound Records, which led to a mini-revival in his recording career. This saw him releasing a number of well-received songs, reminding dancehall fans that he still had what it takes to remain current in dancehall. In 2015, after a three-year partnership and renaissance in his career, he parted ways with Downsound Records and opened his own picture frame studio on Blackwood Terrace in Kingston. The first time we get to up a super camp, we get it from. Glad you know that, me. Yeah, you mean? Walk like me, water. Listen to me. Rhythm, go there, rhythm. This is after. Flare it to a deal. I'm not addicted, addicted, addicted to no water. Can't be one, you the trial for his 2009 arrest and him being subsequently charged for murder finally got underway in October 2017 after being delayed numerous times over the course of eight years with the case being transferred back and forth between various courts. The case was listed for trial 17 times but failed to get underway and was mentioned in court a total of 23 times. Six of those times were set as priority dates. The unavailability of courtrooms, judges and stories that a few of the witnesses were stranded in Antigua after their passports were taken away from them were some of the reasons for the many delays or so it has been made to look. Ninja Man has professed his innocence, saying the victim was like his son, which suggests that he knew Johnson. Ninja Man was also hit with a travel ban, preventing him from working overseas. However, he was allowed to travel a few times through personal requests, which he said was of great hassle and filled with many obstacles. Ninja Man was remanded and October the 17th on orders of trial judge Martin Gale as the trial finally got underway. He was rushed to hospital during the trial on Friday, November the 3rd with chest pains. It was later revealed that he needs a minor heart surgery to fix a heart condition. On November 20, 2017, a seven-member jury found Ninja Man and his co-accused guilty of the 2009 murder of Johnson. The veteran DJ listened as the verdict was handed down by the jury a few minutes after 4 p.m. after they had deliberated for some 3 hours and 11 minutes. The trial lasted for over a month. In response to the verdict, Ninja Man simply said, I saw it go man. In addition to the murder conviction, Ninja Man was found guilty of shooting with intent. And we are beg you, do 
the, the jury already passed their verdict, so it's now in your hands. You know you have to make a judgment. In terms but, of the sentence? Yeah. But. So you're asking. Me know them when to you know you're a minor runner. God, me know. <laughs> me know. Because to the nature of the case, me can't tell you. I've been to jailhouse, I've been to courthouse, and I know what the judge, the, the, the least thinking the judge them have not them yet. To the sentence, this judge is thinking to drop. I mean, I beg you, you're not do. Ninja Man was sentenced on Monday, December the 18th by Judge Martin Gale, who handed down a life sentence for the murder charge, to which he must serve 25 years before being eligible for parole. He was also sentenced to 20 years for shooting with intent. Both sentences will run concurrently. In response to the sentence, Ninja Man smiled at the judge and said, Thumbs up your honor. His lawyer, Queen's Counsel for Renita Robertson, has vowed to appeal his conviction, taking it to the Privy Council if necessary. Despite this unfortunate situation which currently faces him, Ninja Man has also had a very positive influence in recent years, where he has helped many needy Jamaicans through his Ninja Man Foundation. His work includes providing food, clothes and books for many kids and adults alike across the island, aid the construction of houses, providing wheelchairs and host streets in various communities. Four or five artists dead, but yes. and when you when you do music, there's a demonic force that surround music, you know. Currently age 51, Ninja Man will be eligible for parole when he's age 76. Ninja by his own admission has fathered 29 kids with 28 different women. One of the most popular dancehall DJs of the late 80s and early 90s, Ninja Man was also perhaps the most controversial thanks to his often violent pro-gun lyrics. His bad man image overshadowed the fact that he was a hugely talented freestyle lyricist and the owner of a theatrical stuttering delivery that made him a highly distinctive toaster. Ninja also delved into social commentary at times, protesting war and the harsh realities of ghetto life rather than glamorizing their attendant violence. By the late 90s, Ninja Man was making far more headlines due to his turbulent personal life than his music. But even if his recording activities had tailed off, he remained a popular and still polarizing concert act. His substantial catalogue includes memorable duets with Lovers Rock legend Gregory Isaac, Linval Thompson, Admiral Tibet and Kokoti in addition to a number of roots and culture tunes alongside signature Badman staples. If you are a true dancehall fan, you will appreciate the impact that the Gorgon has had on the music landscape in Jamaica and be disappointed in the fact that the likes of him we might never see again. Learn faster from we the entertainers than from even the teachers in school. So our main responsibility is to hold up the youth and keep them strong. The thing is that them don't see themselves as a message sender or a teacher. Them just see themselves as an entertainer. Thank you for watching the video. Drop a like and a comment down below and consider subscribing if you haven't done so as yet. Until next time, walk good.